Boxing Will Weekly, speaking with the current undisputed middleweight champion, Clarissa Shields. And I want to start with the Marshall win. After that, was it hard to find someone else that was going to give you kind of that you'll see energy that you had definitely going into that Marshall fight? Well, one, it's always been hard for me to get fights, even before Marshall. Uh, I just get lucky and we always find somebody who's willing to set the, you know, step up or we fight the girls who rank two or three or one. There's always a girl out there with that she can beat the quote. You know, I guess because I ain't knocking these girls out, these girls fight, they have a chance. But uh, I go in there and I destroy all of them. So I got that same energy that I have for Marshall with all these girls who I fought. And we're talking about Christina Hammer, Hannah Gabriels, Hannah Rankin, French on. And I think I've had that same energy with everybody, not just with Marshall. And it's the same way now. You know, if a girl thinks she can beat me, it's automatic beef. <laughs> <laughs> the best experience is to be inside the ring. You can practice all you want to, but when it comes to like an actual fight where both of you are going 100%, you can learn whatever you learn, but as soon as you get hit, you're going to unlearn it. You know, I'm just excited to one, be the first fighters to fight at Little Caesars Arena in front of 15,000 fans. This is huge for me. Um, when people do all that talking about, oh, women's boxing isn't big in America. We don't get to fight at the big venues. We don't have fans. All that has been bull crap and lies this entire time. I'm happy that now uh, everybody has realized that when I went over there to the UK to fight against Marshall, 20,000 fans didn't just come out to see Marshall. A lot of those fans were there to see me. A lot of Americans flew over to support me. So I have a huge following, not just in America, but in the UK, Nigeria, Africa. I mean, I can go Dubai, I can go anywhere in the world and fight. So I am big enough to fight at these big places in America. And I've been big enough. I'm just happy now that I'm, that I'm getting my big chance and everything at Little Caesars, like right down the street from my hometown, Flint. So uh, we about to turn Little Caesars out. How much do you think that Marshall win elevated your stature in the sport? It definitely uh, elevated it. You know, I think that we all need our George Foreman, right? We all need our Joe Frazier. And I'm Muhammad Ali, and she was my George Foreman. <laughs> okay. And um, I think that the fight was needed to just show people that, you know, people talking about self-proclaimed woke. If I'm the self-proclaimed woke, then Muhammad Ali was the self, -pro you know, self-proclaimed goat. Oh. Then, yeah. It's like, nah, we not self-proclaimed. Of course, we called ourselves that first, but we also proved to the world that we are what we said we are. And I'm the quote, not no self-proclaimed. I actually proved it to everybody, to all the girls who said that I wasn't. When I was inexperienced, um, the fighter who only had six fights, seven fights, eight fights, I was fighting against girls that was 24-0, 21-0, undefeated for nine years, undisputed championships. And I've been breaking records this whole time. You know, and so I'm not self-proclaimed anything. I am the greatest woman of all time, and there's nobody in the future or in the past who can dispute that. Nope, you hands down have the best resume of a, of, of any female that's ever fought in the professional boxing game. So uh, I'm hold on good. now, uh, hold on, because my resume is better than a lot of the males too. Well, yeah, well, well, you're the only person who has done the undisputed thing the way that you've done it, not just two in two different divisions, but three time undisputed champion has. Uh, yeah, it's, it, I ain't got nothing against down. all the other men who box, but it's hard to be undisputed once, but then to do it uh, at another weight class and then to do it again at the same weight class. Like, it's I'm a three time undisputed champion now up in two divisions and men are still trying to become undisputed and two-time undisputed champions. Yeah, and that leads me perfectly to my next question. Uh, that, What or who is left for your Clarissa Shields to accomplish? <laughs> um, there's always somebody being um, built up, you know, somebody who is looking at me as their stepping stone or, or as they big break. So I always feel like there's an opponent. You know, okay. I think that, um, what about what about going back? W would you go back down to 154 for a big fight? Well, um, I was supposed to be fighting against Natasha Jones mm -hmm. at 154, but she turned down almost half a million dollars. 
to fight against me. And um, I don't know why she think that she should get paid more than that, you know, when she's not really a big, she's not a biggest draw as Marshall was. And, you know, and I'm also going down the weight class, but um, yeah. I, I will always go down to 54 and fight against the best girls. I was willing to go down to 47 to fight for the undisputed championship against Jessica McCaskill. Okay. Um, a, a lot of these girls are pick me fighters. So they're like, yeah, there are certain girls who I'll fight at 154 or there are certain girls I'll fight at 147. But if it's Clarissa Shields, then it's enough. So these girls are really scary as hell. And they're not um, champions to me because champions have heart. I called out Cecilia Brockett at 154 and told her I'd come to 47, didn't want to do it. I called out Natasha Jonas at 154 because she came all the way from 135. She didn't want to do it. Um, I will fight any of those girls at 54 or any of those girls at 47 who got a belt who won't smoke with me. And I'll make the weight limit, 47, 54, and I'll win. And I'll, and I'll beat them. So, you know, a lot of these girls are just, oh, let me pick the easy fights. And that's what they do. And I guess I'm not an easy fight. I saw you already gave your prediction on the Zern. Is the winner of that who you want next? Um, you know, I'm gonna let boxing play itself out. You know, whoever is the best is who I want next. You know, it is what it is. You know, like French is actually more than my friend. She like a sister to me. Yeah. And we all know that Marshall is, you know, arch nemesis. She wanna be friends, but I don't wanna be friends with her. Yeah. So um how I see it, I do believe that franchise has enough to beat Marshall. Um, I think this fight, like I said, is too soon for Marshall to be taken, honestly, after the beating that I gave her. And, you know, but she's trying to save her face right now. She let the whole United Kingdom down and she got to try to avenge it in some way. So why not go for the super middleweight undisputed championship? The weight she should have been fighting at anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Marshall is a very big girl, and I'll just say this, and I'll say it publicly, I don't know how many times, she's a weight bully, and that's why she has all those knockouts. She brings girls from 147 up to 68, girls from 54 up to 68, you know, three days notice, one week's notice, and then she knock them out, because she's just too strong, too in shape, and, you know, too powerful. Um, soon as she fought against a true 160 pounder, which is myself, she wasn't able to withstand the stuff that I was putting on her. Mm -hmm. And, um, the first five rounds of the fight, I mean, it wasn't even a fight. I just went out there and just pieced her up, you know, but she was uh, very big. And like I was saying before, um, she skipped 168 for a reason and came down to 60. She thought that she'd be too big for me, too strong for me and be able to take me out. And she found out that I'm a true 160 pounder and I fought at 68 before, so I'm not a small girl. And I think that her fighting against Franchine if she thought that I was strong, I'm sorry to tell you, but Franchine is fucking stronger than me. <laughs> she always, she always has been stronger than me. And um, me and Franchine gonna do some work together because it's always, look, it's team anybody versus Marshall. If any girl fight against Marshall and she come to me and she want the recipe to beat Savannah Marshall, I'm gonna give it to her just because she lived off of, lived off of a win that she got in the amateur that she really didn't win. If you watch the fight up on Sky Sports, they posted it. Everybody's saying that Savannah Marshall really lost to me in the amateurs. But since she lived up there for 10 years, any girl who gets in the ring with Savannah Marshall and wants to know how to beat her, if they're if they're cool with me, I'm going to give them the recipe to do it. So French John is definitely going to get the recipe. And I'm hoping she knocks Savannah Marshall ass out. <laughs> That's the perfect way to end it. Anyway, anyway, you'll have a big fight coming up on June 3rd. You have big fights galore after that. <laughs> every every fight that I'll be in, they'll, they will consider the best women's boxing match ever because I'm involved. You know, these girls bring the skills and all that stuff, and I bring the trash talk, the skills, the accolades. I am women's boxing. That's awesome, Clarissa. A pleasure speaking with you. I can't wait for June 3rd. Tune into the zone, you guys. June 3rd. <laughs>